Jackie Kennedy never got along with her younger sister, Lee Radziwill. Their father cruelly preferred the elder Jackie, calling her the most beautiful daughter a man ever had. Before Jackie's death, she actually cut her sister out of her will entirely, leaving her with nothing. Clearly, the sister's relationship didn't improve as the years went by, though a recent book has revealed the chilling betrayal that may explain why Lee was left out in the cold. But more on that later. Decades after her tenure in the White House, Jackie Kennedy remains one of the most beloved first ladies in the U.S. history. Known for her iconic style, romances, and family life, Jackie's story is reminiscent of a gripping soap opera. Though she is now recognized as Jackie Kennedy and Jackie O, her birth name was Jacqueline Lee Bouvier. Born into New York's elite social circle on July 28, 1929, Jackie was the daughter of the infamous Wall Street stockbroker Blackjack Bouvier III and socialite Janet Norton Lee. Despite her privileged upbringing, Jackie quickly realized that money couldn't buy happiness. It merely provided fabulous wardrobes and an abundance of drama. Jackie's charm manifested early on, particularly in her relationship with her father, who openly favored her over her younger sister, Lee. This favoritism solidified a close bond between Jackie and her father throughout their lives, while Jackie's relationship with her sister took a different turn. Jackie's childhood home was as repressed as expected, the Bouviers presented an image of the perfect family, but behind closed doors, a different reality unfolded. As Jackie and Lee vied for their parents' affection, Jackie's father, John, grappled with his own demons, alcoholism, and serial infidelity. The Wall Street crash of 1929 exacerbated their troubles. The family's financial downturn led to the breaking point for Jackie's parents, with her mother demanding a divorce. The tabloids eagerly exposed the lurid details of the Bouvier's crumbling marriage. According to one of Jackie Kennedy's biographers, the divorce story took an even more scandalous turn, involving a cunning plan by Jackie's mother to expose her husband's infidelity. Jackie did not cope well with her parents' separation at the age of 11. She became introverted, finding solace in reading novels and horseback riding. When her mother remarried a wealthy lawyer just two years after the divorce, Jackie responded with a belated rebellion, refusing to attend the wedding. At 22, Jacqueline Bouvier secured an internship at Vogue magazine, beating over a thousand other applicants. However, she abruptly quit on her first day after being advised that working could harm her marriage prospects. Despite this decision, Jackie's path to matrimony didn't lead to the expected outcome. Her first serious suitor was Wall Street banker John Houston, whom she was engaged to at 22, but ultimately found him immature and boring. The engagement ended within three months, and soon after, Jackie met the man with whom she would forever be associated, JFK. Despite running in the same social circle for years, it wasn't until March 1952 that Jackie Bouvier and John F. Kennedy were formally introduced. While they shared common interests, their connection was not a legendary love at first sight, but a more intricate and complex affair. According to a recent biography on Jackie Kennedy, the couple had three separate encounters before John F. Kennedy considered pursuing a romantic relationship. Even when they did start dating, Jackie wasn't entirely convinced that JFK was the one, expressing her reservations in her diary by describing him as having a funny body, skinny with toothpick legs. Considering this and her previous disinterest in her boring ex, one might wonder if Jackie O harbored a secret inclination for sharp wit. Despite their initial challenges, Jackie and JFK eventually developed a connection. Just a few months after their first meeting, John F. Kennedy proposed. However, Jackie played the role of the elusive partner, taking a whole month to contemplate his marriage proposal before finally saying yes in November of 1952. The delay was attributed in part to their busy schedules, Kennedy running for the U.S. Senate and Bouvier working as a journalist, but a dark reason surfaced as well. Reportedly, JFK's father, Joe, had stringent criteria for his son's choice of spouse, considering it not only a matter of romance, but also a significant career move. If JFK aspired to become president, he needed a specific kind of woman by his side. With her pedigree, education, and impeccable fashion sense, Jackie perfectly fit the bill. For Joe Kennedy Sr., that is. Some sources claim he instructed JFK to propose. In 1953, Jackie Kennedy and JFK tied the knot in a grand ceremony in Newport, Rhode Island, attended by 700 guests. The wedding, considered the high society event of the season, included a lavish 1,200-person reception at Hammersmith Farm. 
Jackie's wedding dress, a spectacle in itself, is still preserved at the Kennedy Library in Boston, Massachusetts. As the subject of JFK's infamous presidential libido, Jackie's awareness of her husband's affairs is a topic of curiosity. While some biographies suggest that she anticipated such behavior in their social stratum, others reveal a more complex narrative. A saying about women marrying men resembling their fathers resonates eerily with Jackie, who acknowledged that both JFK and her father shared undesirable traits, relishing the chase and resenting their conquests. Contrary to Jackie's composed demeanor, an unauthorized biography suggests she wasn't always tolerant of JFK's infidelity. Allegedly, Joe Kennedy Sr. offered Jackie a staggering $1 million to endure her husband's constant philandering. The amount would increase to $20 million if JFK contracted any diseases. Before her renowned marriage, Jackie had already left an imprint on society. An accomplished horseback rider, the 1948 debutante of the year, and an unexpected role as an inquiring camera girl for the Washington Times Herald, Jackie conducted man-on-the-street interviews with random citizens, a foreshadowing of her future as a first lady. Jackie's journey into motherhood during her marriage to John F. Kennedy was marked by profound challenges. Despite being pregnant five times, only two of her children, Caroline and John F. Kennedy Jr., survived infancy. Her first pregnancy ended in a miscarriage in 1955, and the second in 1956 resulted in the stillbirth of a daughter, Arabella. Complicating matters, JFK faced his own health crises, undergoing spinal surgery in 1954 and dealing with Addison's disease. While JFK's numerous affairs generally didn't deeply trouble Jackie, some betrayals were intolerable. For instance, when Jackie gave birth to their stillborn daughter, Arabella, JFK was conspicuously absent leaving her furious when she discovered what he was doing instead. He was on a Mediterranean yacht, engaged with one of his mistresses. To make matters worse, upon learning of Jackie's stillbirth, he displayed a lack of urgency. In his perspective, there was no need to fuss over something irreversible. Now that's heartless. Not surprisingly, Jackie was devastated by her husband's callous actions. In fact, his behavior following the stillbirth of their daughter pushed Jackie to the brink. It marked one of the only two occasions when his conduct was so egregious that she contemplated for divorce. She ultimately chose to stay, persuaded by her family to accept the situation and make her marriage work. While on the campaign trail for her husband's Senate re-election, Jackie finally experienced the joy of giving birth to her first living child. Named Caroline, she arrived on November 27, 1957. After two previous pregnancies ending in loss, Jackie and JFK were overjoyed to welcome their daughter, commemorating the occasion with a glamorous photo shoot for the cover of Life magazine. During JFK's campaign, the Kennedys recognized Jackie as a valuable asset to their public relations efforts. Whenever she joined her husband at rallies, the crowds swelled, doubling in size compared to JFK's solo appearances. JFK acknowledged his wife's popularity, featuring her in ads and deeming her simply invaluable to his public success. However, behind the scenes, the situation was less harmonious. Despite her public popularity, Jackie, inherently a classic horse girl, felt discomfort with JFK's massive crowds and the attention. Privately, she displayed shyness, far from the natural-born campaigner image perceived by the American public. A sophisticated upbringing didn't necessarily equip her to easily endure such circumstances. In 1959, the Kennedys began preparations for JFK's 1960 presidential election. As a style icon with her Chanel suits and timeless fashion sense, Jackie took charge of her husband's wardrobe. However, fate intervened and she wouldn't be able to assist JFK for long. Shortly after launching JFK's presidential bid in 1960, Jackie found herself pregnant for the fourth time. With a history of high-risk pregnancies, she opted for caution, choosing to stay home in Georgetown rather than accompany her husband on the campaign trail. Despite this, Jackie remained active by writing a weekly syndicated column, Campaign Wife, where she gave interviews and responded to correspondence on behalf of JFK. Unfortunately, JFK's behavior during this time wasn't exemplary. After all, shedding a lifetime of womanizing habits was not an instant transformation. On the campaign trail, JFK lived up to his reputation, engaging in several affairs, including a controversial one with Judith Exner, who had connections to the mob, an evident conflict of interest. Despite her husband's infidelity, Jackie played the role of the picture-perfect wife, becoming a public fashion icon, whose style made regular headlines in women's magazines. However, her penchant for high-end fashion garnered negative press, alienating everyday Americans who couldn't afford such luxurious attires. In response to this backlash, Jackie attempted to downplay her elite background. 
though she continued wearing high-end fashion, notably Chanel, a brand that's associated with her to this day. The campaign trail proved to be quite a journey for both JFK and Jackie Kennedy, but their efforts were rewarded on November 8, 1960, when John F. Kennedy became the 35th president of the USA. With their victory, the first couple brought a youthful and stylish revolution to the White House, although the joyous times would not endure for long. In the early hours of November 25, 1960, Jackie Kennedy welcomed her son, John F. Kennedy Jr. Sadly, this marked another challenging chapter in her journey to motherhood. John arrived three weeks premature, and for a harrowing moment, he struggled to breathe, requiring a resident to assist by blowing air into his lungs. The difficult labor necessitated a two-week hospital stay for both mother and son to recover. But apart from being the doting mother, to carefully maintain her idealized image, Jackie became the first first lady to have her own press secretary, Pamela Turner. Together, they meticulously controlled Jackie's public image, crafting public statements and restricting access to photographs of her children. Given her husband's rather active personal life, having a PR team seemed like a prudent decision. But despite the image management, Jackie occasionally revealed glimpses of her true feelings. During a tour of the White House with a French reporter, she casually introduced one of her husband's secretaries, Priscilla Ware, as the girl who is supposedly sleeping with my husband. Jackie's intuition was accurate as both Ware and her co-secretary, Jill Cohen, were indeed having affairs with JFK. Despite JFK's numerous mistresses during his presidency, one particular affair was especially hurtful to Jackie. JFK's lover, White House staffer Mimi Alford, who was just 19 at the time, claimed that their first intimate encounter occurred in an inappropriate room, with Alford losing her virginity in Jackie Kennedy's bed, an especially harsh betrayal. Interestingly, though Jackie isn't reported to have had any affairs, she attracted attention from high-powered gentlemen, including her husband's adversary, Nikita Khrushchev. The Soviet premier displayed a notable interest in Jackie, shaking her hand before JFK's and even sending her a puppy, whose mother had been one of the Soviet space dogs. While Marilyn Monroe is the most famous of JFK's mistresses, the affair actually bothered Jackie. In a dramatic face-off described by biographer Christopher Anderson, Monroe called Jackie, claiming that JFK had promised to marry her. Jackie remained composed, telling Monroe that she could assume the responsibilities of the first lady while Jackie would move out. While she might have played it cool, this confrontation deeply affected Jackie, as Monroe was the only mistress who truly scared her due to the potential scandal. But with the tragic death of Marilyn Monroe in August 1962, Jackie's fears lessened. However, more sorrow awaited. On August 7, 1963, Jackie experienced a heartbreaking moment as she gave birth for the final time, her fifth child, Patrick Bouvier Kennedy, born five weeks premature, could only be delivered via emergency C-section. Sadly, he lived for just 39 hours before succumbing to hyaline membrane disease. After the loss of her son, Jackie understandably sank into a profound depression. The public, however, showed less understanding toward her coping strategies. A personal invitation from her friend Aristotle Onassis to recover on his private yacht was extended, and despite the presidential's initial reluctance, he eventually allowed Jackie to take a personal vacation. Yet this event raised eyebrows even more so with what was to come. Because in November 22, 1963, was the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Riding with her husband in a motorcade in downtown Dallas, Jackie initially mistook the sound of gunfire for a motorcycle backfiring. It was only when the governor screamed that she realized the gravity of the situation. As JFK was shot through the head, Jackie seemed to climb towards the back of the limo. A Secret Service agent believed she was trying to reach for a piece of her husband's skull, which had flown across the car to the trunk. Jackie herself couldn't recall the incident even after seeing the pictures. Refusing to change out of her blood-stained Chanel suit after JFK's violent demise, Jackie wore it to Lyndon B. Johnson's swearing-in ceremony, where she was asked to be present to legitimize the vice president's impromptu administration. She wanted them to see what they have done to Jack. In recently discovered letters, Jackie expressed the profound impact of her husband's assassination. Writing to a priest she had known for years, she confessed, I am so bitter against God. No one seemed to understand what she was going through, with her mother attempting to support her grieving daughter by saying, We've all lost Jack, but it's been eight months. You have to snap out of it. And snap out of it, she eventually did. Being beautiful, famous, and wealthy, men pursued Jackie, including diplomat David Ormsby Gore. 
Their travels together to Cambodia spark rumors of a romantic involvement. However, recent letters reveal that Jackie declined Gore's marriage proposal and opted for another suitor, Greek business tycoon Aristotle Onassis. And in 1968, Jackie entered into a marriage with him. Her new husband, a wealthy Greek shipping magnate, could provide a security she sought for herself and her two Kennedy children. But her sister Lee, who never had a strong relationship with her, didn't see it that way and saw their ties further strained when Jackie married Aristotle. Why, you may ask? Onassis and Lee had been romantically involved, and Lee still harbored feelings for the Greek tycoon. Learning of Jackie's intention to marry Onassis, Lee reportedly expressed, How can she do this to me? Their already strained relationship never fully recovered after this perceived betrayal. But while Jackie sought safety and financial security for her and her children, Onassis married Jackie for her status as the ultimate trophy wife. Despite both achieving their initial goals, the couple found themselves in constant conflict over money, Jackie's spending habits, and their evident incompatibility. Numerous sources reported nights spent in silence, and Onassis began to refer to Jackie as the witch. And by the 1970s, Onassis reportedly escalated his efforts to make Jackie miserable. He publicly flaunted his affairs, disclosed Jackie's extravagant shopping sprees to the press, and crossed the line when he hired someone to photograph his wife sunbathing on a Greek island without any clothing. As if that wasn't enough, he went further by publishing the explicit photos in a lewd magazine. Jackie, unaware of her husband's involvement, felt furious and humiliated, demanding his support to sue the publication. Little did she know that Onassis was the mastermind behind the entire scandal. Unsurprisingly, over time, Jackie's second marriage deteriorated. In 1973, Onassis' son, Alexander, tragically perished in an airplane crash. In their grief, the family sought someone to blame for the unfortunate accident. And, as expected, they pointed fingers at Jackie. Onassis' daughter, Christina, attributed the plane crash to the infamous Kennedy curse, claiming it now affected the Onassis family and predicting, before long, she will kill us all. Apparently, Onassis took his daughter's words seriously. Shortly after his son's death, he initiated divorce proceedings against Jackie. However, just before Onassis could finalize his divorce and distance himself from his wife, he succumbed to respiratory failure in 1975. It makes one wonder about the so-called Kennedy curse. Following Onassis' death, Jackie engaged in a legal dispute with her stepdaughter, Christina Onassis, regarding the late tycoon's estate. And even with significant limitations under the Greek law for non-Greek widows, Jackie, twice widowed, managed to secure a modest $26 million settlement. Jackie's first two marriages may have left much to be desired, but a third time proved to be the charm. She found happiness with Maurice Templesman, a kind and soft-spoken diamond merchant. Despite their profound bond, they never officially married, due to Templesman's religiously devout estranged wife, who refused to go through a formal divorce. In 1993, a doctor discovered a lump on Jackie's body, leading to a diagnosis of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Throughout the year, she underwent chemotherapy treatment with Templesman, providing steadfast support. Jackie's health declined as the disease spread to her spinal cord, brain, and liver. Choosing to spend her last days at home, she stopped treatment and passed away in her sleep on May 19, 1994, at the age of 64. Even in death, Jackie Kennedy remains one of the most popular first ladies in American history, with hundreds of Americans keeping vigil outside their home. But even though Jackie's legacy painted a rosy picture, the same cannot be said with her sister, Lee. In a move that nobody seemingly saw coming, when Jackie passed, she made no provision for her younger sister, Lee, in her will. While this may seem harsh, a recent book suggests a shocking reason behind this apparent snub. Allegedly, before JFK assumed the presidency, he engaged in a passionate affair with Lee, and Jackie chose to serve an eye for an eye in death after being betrayed by her own sister. This surely takes sibling rivalry to new heights. A close friend to both Jackie and Lee even once claimed that the first lady maintained a confidential list of her adversaries. And guess whose name made it onto that list? None other than her sister, Lee Radzibel. Because of this, some speculate whether Jackie's marriage to Lee's former love, Aristotle Onassis, served as a belated form of retribution for the time when Lee had an affair with Jackie's first husband, President John F. Kennedy. 
Overall, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis led a life that was undeniably extraordinary, although without complexities. From her early years as a debutante and journalist to becoming the iconic First Lady of the United States, Jackie captivated the world with her grace and style, which became synonymous to her name. And beyond facing heartbreak, including the tragic loss of her children and the assassination of her first husband, Jackie persevered. Her legacy extends beyond the glamorous facade, her name iconic and echoing through time. She will forever be a captivating figure whose story continues to be celebrated and remembered. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more.